Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about um, building habits and a schedule for next year and just talking about improvements that we can make to our day so that we can actually pull this off. And we should be able to look at your calendar and your bank account and determine how much money you're making without talking to you. So I want everyone to write, get an idea of what it looks like, how much money is going into your business, the productivity of you is the most important thing to think about. I want everyone to think about how much you're producing per hour. So I'm going to give you guys sort of a breakdown. I was thinking about how long it takes me to get an item, describe an item, list an item, photograph it, all of that. So I'd say it's like three minutes. So three minutes to get an item all the way through the system. I call it from pile to polybag. Um, it would be the same for a piece of furniture or a hard good because those require less research in my opinion, because most of them, especially if it has a UPC code or it's a new item. So this is say three minutes for that part and a minute to get the item packed. You would need to have really clean systems to be able to get an item ready to ship in a minute. So that's four. So for me, at 50, that's 15 items an hour, four minutes times 15. If you add that together and you do, let's say I have, um, five dollars profit per item that's 75 dollars an hour is what i'm making as a reseller now hopefully i'll make more than five dollars an item but everyone needs to think about their time because unless you own your resale company and people work and you're not there then you're essentially an hourly worker so i think that's good There's nothing wrong with being an hourly worker you can essentially make, um, let's say you break it down to 10 minutes for everything. If you are making $5 an item and you can do one every 10 minutes, that's still 30 bucks an hour. You, you could quit your job. No problem. If you could do an item every 10 minutes and be fine, you could at least get by in the beginning. But looking at how efficient like tech and sports is the listing part, for me, it's three minutes. For him, it's a minute and four seconds. That's three times as fast on that part of it. And then shipping is probably the same or a little bit faster with him. So he can maybe do 30 an hour. So 30 an hour times $5 profit on the low end, that's still, you, I put you in a top 1% of income earners. You can, it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. You can get to that rate. So I want people to think about how you can be more productive with your time, how you want to set up your day. I was just telling, uh, discussing with Tech and Sports this morning, I'm starting to ship first. I normally don't recommend that because shipping is the easiest, but it does give you good momentum. And I think that momentum is important. You want an easy win. Start your day off with an easy win, like a, a glass of water, a cup of coffee, ship, then use that momentum to get into listing. What does your day look like? For me, um, right now I'm at an average of 50 sales a day in this clothing store and I'm listing 80 to hundred plus, but I'd like to get to hundred sales a day. So looking at it hour wise, let's just say this, and I'm only doing 15 an hour, everything all said and done. That means I need eight hour, seven or eight hours a day to knock that out. That's seven or eight hours of actually working. So scheduling that, I'm just going to treat it like a nine to five. I'm going to start working at nine and stop working at six um, with a half an hour lunch break in there. And that's going to be how I accomplish my goal of getting to a hundred sales a day for that. And then the first thing I'm going to do when I get there is ship. Um, I've been, my, my pickup's like at 1230. So it depends on your schedule, but I think everyone would be okay with shipping first. Get it done as early as possible. You can do, I do same day handling for to 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern. So that's like 6 a.m. here. And that's plenty of time to get it all out. But I want people to build momentum looking at your week. So for me, essentially 100 sales a day is Monday through Friday, nine to six, um, assuming items come to me. And then it also requires about 10 hours outside of those hours to acquire the goods, get the stuff coming in. That's looking through manifests and we had mentioned earlier um, 
setting up lists to get inventory. So during this call, it, even a half an hour before I'm looking through lots locally. And as long as you can get like 10, everyone should write this down. Have your goal for 2021 to get 10 business suppliers. So Brandon, you're a furniture company. You need 10 relationships from other furniture companies or estate companies or staging companies, 10 companies that use you as their person to get rid of goods. If everyone has that at the end of the year, their business is going to be totally different. Linda, you need 10 home designers that use you exclusively. That totally changes everything. Just 10 business customers or 10 business suppliers. You'll be good. So let's start with Brian. Brian, good morning. Thank you for joining. What do you want to work on with your schedule? Good morning. Um, yeah, I, I like the way you, you're breaking it down. Um, I noticed like yesterday, like my, my goal for, for this week is just to get 30 a day. And it, it, like yesterday, I finished earlier than I'd ever finished listing. So I didn't time myself, but obviously my listing speed is increasing. Um, and just, you know, I think I, like right now I'm at about nine to 10 per hour. Um, and I, I like the idea of just gradually building that up because I don't, you know, I don't want to work 18 hours a day. I, I kind of like the, you know, the eight to 10 hour model. Um, and you know, my, my is probably about $15 per item. So if I can get you know, if I can get to five minutes per listing all the way through, that'd be 12 an hour. Um, and at 15 bucks, at 15 bucks profit, you know, that, that's a really good hourly rate. Um, and like I said, then, like I was talking to you yesterday, I also do the wholesale replenishables, which are easier to list. I do want to make sure I have time to, to source and to uh, keep developing those relationships. So, um, I don't know. I just, I just want to keep, keep becoming more efficient to, uh, to try to hit those goals. So how do you want to do your 30 a day? I love that goal. That's an incredible goal. It's 200 ish a week, um, or 150 to 200 a week. And you can make a great living, but when, what does your day look like? So I, I, I get up, um, usually about six o'clock, have my coffee, uh, check emails do the do do the customer service first and then i go into shipping like what you were talking about um get that knocked out drop off at the post office then then i go into listing um and you know it, it had been taking me to about 6 p.m to get my listing done and actually doing fewer listings but yesterday i was done at 4 30 so I, I do, I, I, I do think I could get up to probably 50 listings a day and, and still finish, you know, by PM eventually by the end of 2021. And, you know, I think that would be a good comfortable goal in place for me to be in 2021. Okay. Awesome. Um, do you, where do you list? Uh, like right here, like to my left, I've got the light box that you have. I have, mm -hmm tables back here where I do my measurements. So I have kind of a, I don't know, a, a six by six area where I do just about everything and kind of moving from left to right. And then where I, I sit down here to finish the listing, I measure, do measurements, photograph, sit down, list, bag, and it goes into a bin to my right. So kind of that workflow we've been talking about. Love it. Let's go with Brandon. Brandon, good morning. Let's talk about your schedule in 2021. You're a busy guy already. Morning, everybody. Um, yeah, I've I I live by a very time blocked schedule. Uh, scheduling is not my problem. Focusing on the right things, like focusing on the things that are going to benefit my business the most during those time blocks, are the most important things for me. So I've been focused on um, just trying to, like for instance, I have a four hour time block um, during every day during which I get new furniture clean and stage it and take, take pictures of furniture and deliver furniture. So like, I, and I, I leave that kind of flexible because a lot of driving is involved. I do much less shipping than, than driving around and deliveries and stuff. So, you know, the Kansas city area where I live is, it's pretty spread out. So, um, you know, sometimes I have just a, you know, 10 minutes of driving other days. It's like an hour, like, you know, somewhere and back. And so it's just, 
I have to kind of like leave that open. But what I'm trying to focus on is consistently improving the quality of, of my items. So uh, right now I might list four to five items a day um, across the different platforms. And sometimes I, I don't list them all on every platform. I list them where they make sense. But uh, basically uh, I want to like right now, I'd say um, one item out of like 15 so over the course of three days maybe one of those items is like a really high-end super nice piece of furniture and the rest is just furniture in good shape you know and I, i'm trying to just kind of like make those percentages skew in the the favor of of higher end furniture and uh just kind of trying to find ways and succeeding but slowly in finding ways to to source higher end furniture so that that's kind of like my main goal at the moment and then to upgrade my storage unit again that's where i'm at so do you just try to get everything done in that one four hour block? Um, I try to get the the staging and the and the the photos done, the deliveries done, and any shipping that I do have, and then um, the pickups of new items like from auctions and things like that. But my listing and my my other stuff where I like renew things and send offers on eBay and all that is is in a different time block. So the more like sit down administrative type stuff is is not within those four hours but everything else is this is the stuff that earns you more money yeah the profit generating stuff yeah i I like that if you guys had i would say like even like 90 minutes a day an hour and a half of either listing or sourcing better stuff if you did that every day you would be fine you don't need to do that's like the meat and potatoes of reselling yeah i my a big part of what works well for me is every single morning I have like a 20 minute time block where I, this is not the listing. I do the listing later in the evening, but my, uh, I sit down and I, I look through my eBay and, you know, I only ever have like right now, I I only ever have like 25 to 30 items in there because they're bigger, you know, furniture type items. And as soon as one sells, I'm replenishing it basically again, that the higher end stuff is what I put on eBay. But so I've been sending offers and making sure I'll add if I've missed any, um, item specifics or whatever, like recommended ones, and I'll update those. But then one big thing that's been huge for me is I always make sure all of my listings like on Facebook are renewed. So I just literally go down the list. I wish Facebook had like an option to just renew all, but they don't. You have to just renew them individually. So at least I haven't found it. So I just go through and renew every single listing every single day that, you know, just in case it's, it's, expired. And then I, I literally follow up with every single person uh, it, across all the apps who have messaged me and just said, Hey, you're still interested in this kind of thing. And I've gotten so many sales like that, that I would not have gotten if I, if I did not follow up with them. So that's just a part of my morning routine that they helps a lot. Yeah. I, um, I need to really adjust that a little bit. The customer service is time consuming and I don't really think about it, but it is definitely something that takes up part of your day. Right on. Let's go with Linda. Linda, good morning. Good morning. How do you divide your time up next year? Um, I just made a calendar for this the other night, which is pretty great. And uh, yesterday, so I get up and do my shipping right away before the call. And then, uh, then I do photographs for two hours, which I found once if I have all the stuff laid out and I just take pictures, I can get through it pretty quick, um, get quite a bit done. I did 200 pictures yesterday in two hours. Um, and then, uh, and then I do the listing I had, uh, I did my 25 per day is what I'm doing now. Okay. And I had that done. I scheduled another 17 and it was, I was done by 1130. So, which is uh, really nice. Cause now I can do afternoon to work on my store. Yeah. So go to the brick and mortar after lunch. Yep. I love it. Yeah. So what can we do yeah. next year to get more, designers and because right now i don't think events will work i know so how do we get people to to use you as their resource next year how's Um, the new social media person yeah i i think groups you know facebook groups that i haven't even looked at like like designers i haven't even looked at that um and then a lot of craftsmen also want that connection so we used to do mixers where we put craftsmen in and designers together. So I could probably do some form of that on social media. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that that's something that will require work every day. So I'd almost block out like an hour 
of reaching out and getting those in place because that's huge because each one that you land is like a I was thinking about you over the weekend like it's almost like a hair salon has stylus booths set up right and then but it still works even if they're not there rather but like your situation I know you tried renting out booths but it works better all in yeah. yeah I wouldn't want to do the antique mall thing again but um, I was thinking we have these different craftsmen that used to come to our events and I think I'm going to offer the store to them each weekend one at a time okay and I could have one vendor every weekend but we'll see okay I love it. First half of the day online, second half of the day brick and mortar. Um, I want, I call what you do click and mortar. Hopefully it'll be, it can really scale up. I want you to have your store. Yeah, me too. And you guys are getting me excited about it, which has been really helpful. Thank you for that. I think I need to get the whole thing put online too, which would really help. Yeah, definitely. Let's go with Tucker and Ryan. Good morning. What's the schedule look like next year? We'll wait for it. Sorry. There you are. No worries. Uh, got a different device today. All right, Tucker, go ahead. Um. So a minute of listings, I would say we, we wake up at six-ish, try to get like 10 point listings done in like two hours-ish. And then we pretty much rest of the day go to fish shop and pick. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So when yeah, do you? So you, I know your mom helps out with shipping. When does that happen in the morning too? So we get we get up early, knock out a few listings, pull all the items for her. She gets up, and then like she's literally doing that right now. Okay, awesome. So she she ships. Yeah, she ships in the morning. Uh, right before she like goes and logs on her computer and goes to work. What is but, what does mom think of this internet business? Uh, she she's supportive. <laughs> so you guys are from a family of teachers. Does this I seem? Am. Oh, you I are. Am. I see. And her parents actually own a vintage furniture store. So that's how I did furniture because I learned from her father how to how to refinish furniture. I got um, you a while back. But um, yeah, so. Anyway, so that being said, I would say furniture is one of the hottest categories, not to flood Brandon's market, but a lot of people right now are moving. Tons of people are moving. So do you have any ideas or tips? Is that a category that you and Tucker are thinking about or looking into? No, I mean, I've shut down all of my furniture business to help him. Um, You know, I was doing, I was doing probably like five grand a month in furniture out of the garage um uh when i uh left uh, when i decided to sort of help him and take the kids full time because i'm teaching them basically full time now Mm -hmm. um so i closed that down and we opened up his ebay store um from that i mean i know a lot about the the furniture business just because i was in it and uh, uh uh and my father in law it's still in it. He has a brick and mortar. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah. So in I like the schedule. To, oh, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. In regards to like helping, and I, I, I talked to Brandon a couple times actually in terms of, because what I did the best was probably source. And that's, that was the thing that I found. Um, I, I was probably one of the best sourcers in anywhere around I beat with you furniture. Now. So that was, that was what I did best. <laughs> so I, I, I've, I've, I've hooked him up with a few ideas. I'm going to send him yeah. some more stuff. I owe my improvement in, in photo quality to Ryan. <laughs> sure. well, Brandon, how's that working out for you? The, the better pictures? Much, much better. I've literally got people on Facebook trying to get me to ship furniture to like Michigan now. So that's wow. never, ha- that's never happened before. And I, I don't know if you had this happen, Ryan, but I have people who will message me and say, are these the real photos or did you take this from the website? So I'm like, yes. okay, that, I guess that's, that's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I love, I love yeah. It. So the tip for those guys listening on YouTube, essentially Brandon was staging furniture at a storage unit and now he upgraded his his uh, setup so it looks more like a catalog 
And I think that's huge. That's why Ikea makes so much money because they're essentially selling garbage furniture for great prices because they show you how to, where to put it, how to do it. Um, and then, yeah, there's our, I, I love the staging tips. That's been awesome. Um, also, Ryan, maybe you guys can jump on the Facebook group as well because that's something that I think a lot of people would benefit from. And then also, I think Tucker's pretty uh, inspiring because he's out there getting it. I love, yeah. so, wait, wait, let's, let's back up for a second. During the picking, how do you guys approach that? Do you just do you have a route? Where do you go? Um, so I have, I have a route. I have places to go. I got spots. Like I got one spot in Ashburn. I have a fresh shop and they have the best toys ever. So I get there early in the morning and get all the toys and buy them up and get more money and just clip them. And the lady at the thrift shop even knows that he's coming. She, she'd be like, oh, yeah, I have all the, you know, tw- the Lego boxes new in the box in the back. I'll pull them out for you. And he just goes through and scans them all and goes, OK, I want this one and that one. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I love it. But I don't let him go. We have like sort of a rule at the thrift shop. Like he has to get, so we have to get so many listings done before he's allowed to like source whatever. So like when he bought like the, like when you bought the eBay store, we had like a deal and said, okay, yeah. before you go do another big buy, you have to get 250 more listings done or whatever. Um, so that's sort of like how we kind of manage. I mean, we have a time block schedule but I sort of more manage sort of what he's, his activities with, all right, when you, cause he loves to source, he could source all day long, right? Um, and he could, I mean, he sources at like, uh, I mean, probably $500 an hour some days. I mean, most days, like when we yeah. go on the weekends, I mean, he can source $2,000 in four hours, easy. Yeah. Um, and even at the thrift store, like yesterday, we were there for a half hour, he sourced $500 in a half hour. Right. So um, he loves so now, to do that. So um, now it's but, just that, you know, somehow going from 15, 20 listings a day to like 30 listings a day. That would essentially double. Yeah, since you guys- exactly. And I'd say yeah. we're sort of more like 10 listings a day, probably consistently on average. Okay. And then, you know, some days, sort you, of, some days you get 20. Yeah. And, some and days you get 20. Yeah, so, Tucker, exactly. your mission is to figure out how your family and business can do 30 a day because that would be. Yeah ridiculous that would be awesome yeah so let's get, get what do you get per listing so how much 15 dollars per listing profit a listing so that's it's awesome. 90 so even at five an hour it's 95 dollars an hour right yeah. i think that's right right yeah. 75 no 75 i'm sorry okay i was thinking six an hour all right whatever yeah yeah so it's that's like okay this is i want to talk about this for just a second if you go out and pick items i like the idea of $15 profits because you got to go out there and do it. If you could just order the items, then $5 profit, I think is fine. So it depends on, you know, you, you go out and manually get it. You got to pay yourself for the time and the effort to go out and hunt. Um, also, I was thinking about this. If you, the more things that you know how to sell brands, the more knowledge you have, cause you, you know, you guys have the eye from doing a bunch of different categories. It's like you have better weapons to go hunting. And I was just thinking, uh, I want everyone right now who's listening on YouTube to hit the like button. But the thing I want everyone to realize is people are shopping online more than ever because of the situation we're in. And they're not just going to go back to brick and mortar. When it reorder, when it reopens, there are more fish now in the pond. There's a lot more people fishing for sure. There's a lot more resellers, but there are more people shopping online. I was just listening to the movie theater industry. People are not going to, go to the movie theater and sit six feet apart. They're not going to go back because they've been watching Netflix for nine straight months. They're not going to just switch their habits that quickly. People take a long time to adjust. So even though there's more resellers now, I think it's important to realize, just get really, really good. Learn all the brands. The higher end stuff is $15 profit and above will always sell. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it'll always sell. (laughs) No. I've been learning a lot more about brands with um, collectible cars. With like, I know a lot more brands about those a lot easier now. Yeah. Well, you yeah. learn. Yeah. Yeah. He, Since you did okay. research, I know more about them. Yeah. 
that's so what he did for a long time was just look like research one thing or research certain things so that he was knew what to buy. I love it. Let's go with Christine. Christine, does your schedule need to change next year? What are you doing to adjust to get more stuff up? Yes, my schedule does need to adjust. Um, I have adjust even more because what I've been doing is I wake up in the morning and I do my housework as much as as quietly as possible. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, the um, the other part that I need to change is as I've already done the shipping thing, um, change that to the first thing in the morning after I finish my home stuff. Um, Figuring out the best days to go sourcing is, you know, uh, on what, because some of the sales have changed the sale days in my thrift stores. I've got the route down. Um, it's just figuring out when I go out there now. So that's going, and then consistently um, sourcing. Okay. So do you do family stuff right when you wake up? Most, yes, most days. Okay. I like that. So that gets you grounded, get that out, knocked out of the way. And that should, I mean, is that just, um, let me think here. I'm going to um, have everyone stress uh, or think about heavily their sourcing routes and improving that, going to the, the best places that you can the most often. And one thing that we're going to add, so Tech and, Tech and Sports and I have that Facebook group. Next week, we're adding Hustle at Home Mom to she's going to be doing coaching on thursdays and she is like an ultra sniper when it comes to four hours on the weekend get as much good stuff as possible so i want everyone to do that kind of planning she might do four or five hours planning for one four hour session of sourcing and i think that matters a lot you're hitting the right places at the right time the right community sales the right liquidation places and so if you, it's kind of like spending the first few hours sharpening the saw before you start cutting. I want everyone to really think about that. The route you go on makes a big difference. If it's reverse traffic versus not, it makes a big difference. Um, so I like that. So I, I like the uh, list 15 to 30 items when you wake up and spend the rest of the day looking. That's like, that's not a bad life. Mm -hmm. Um, so any obstacles, Christine, you think that might, the difference between next year's schedule and this year's schedule, what could help or what, what obstacles do you see happening? Well, um, <clears throat> space right now. Um, I did, uh, oh, space. yeah, space, um, until I get my, my, uh, my trailer in the, on the property. Um, <clears throat> Kenneth did move the motorcycles to the other side of the garage. So now I have half the garage for storage, um, which is kind of, uh, I don't, I don't like them closer to the, I don't like mine closer to the tools, um, but that's where they have to be right now. So, so that gives me more space. I love After it. That. Um, somebody in the chat said that they love going to the movie theater um, and it's not the same sitting at home. I, I, that's what I think of Toys R Us. I loved going to Toys R Us as a kid and that does not exist anymore. So I, just, I love movie theaters, but I think that that's not going to be a thing. People are going to be investing, sell home, home entertainment systems. Like right now, there's still a great market for sound bars and TVs because those are so heavy and bulky that a lot of people are doing Facebook marketplace, local pickup, they're doing eBay, local pickup. This is all new stuff that people need to think about because curbside pickup is huge if you look if you go to best buy now i'd say there's tw well, at least where i live half of the parking lot is curbside delivery people you can you can go in the store even in california but people are not so i think that there's a definitely a shift to that type of local pickup and that kind of setup also drive-in movies killing it here right now so that whole trend is back up. Let's go with Mimi. Mimi, good morning. What can you do to improve your schedule next year? Uh, next year, I'm just going to list 10 items a day for the first six months because I have a lot to learn on the eBay system. And 
Okay. Once I master that, I'll bump it up to 20 to 25 items right a day. What can we do to improve the, um, I mean, how do you learn more about the eBay system? Just practice? Uh, yeah, just spend time and go through the websites and stuff. And also decrease my sourcing uh, time. The bean is kind of addictive and I want to go there every day, but I need to be disciplined, maybe go three times a day only. Three times a week? Three times a week okay. instead of going every day. Um, let's see. I kind of want you to go every day. That's such a good habit. Oh, yeah. It's very addictive. <laughs> um, but is there... Let's see here. If you went three times a week, would it give you more time to, to list and learn eBay? Is that the plan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are there days that are better than others? Uh, not really. Every right. day they have good stuff. So the day I don't go, I feel like I'm missing out some good items. And... Do you also have a space problem? Oh, yeah. Major. I have to get a, a bigger storage Hmm. Do you feel like you want the best store with the space you have, or do you want more space? Um, I prefer like base item and smaller item. Okay. Small store instead of having a lot. Because right now I was thinking about that. I just wrote down that. What if I don't change my space this year? Because I change my space like every three months. So if I just don't do anything for the whole year, it would force me to increase my average sale price because if you don't want more space, you'd have to increase it. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. And also my end goal is to live an RV. Okay. And uh, sell item while I'm traveling. So maybe two beans maximum and have a very small item like watches or I don't know, something. So I have a question for you. What if, you just mailed it to an, another person in this group to ship. Because I thought about that, but how much stuff can you really fit in a in a RV? Um, up to two bins. Two bins. I guess that's my you plan. Really expensive stuff. Yeah, so. like small item, like watch, uh, jewelry. Um, but before I do that, I need to learn the eBay system. It's very complicated versus Poshmark. Poshmark, you just list them and you're done. Okay, because um, I'm with you. If, if all goes to plan, I would love to get a sprinter and build it out and travel and do that. But here's the thing. I have friends who have done that, but they're 100% Amazon FBA. Oh, okay. Oh, because yeah. they ship it out. They just have a processing center in the, in the RV. Yeah, Amazon is very easy to do that. You don't have to carry the item with you. Um, that's right. Um, let me see here. Okay, well, I want that. And I'm actually, I, I think it would be cool if the people in this group just shared one. Because yeah, um, if we had just had one and then you could just take it for a month. Because my friends who live on the road also told me that it gets old. It's nice taking a hot shower in a regular bathroom and sleeping in a normal bed. But you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll, when I hit the road, that'll be it. I'll just be living in the forest. It's much cheaper. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you can be, you can do that for a while. You're about to have a baby now, right? Yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I always joked with, um, cause I was like a super loser in high school. And I always told people like, it's because I was raised in the forest. That's why no one knew me. But, you know, I think the baby will like the modern conveniences. That is true. Um, great. So I love it. So three days sourcing, the rest of the days. Uh, and you also have a job? No. Oh, you're not? Okay. This is no. it. This keeps me busy, extremely busy. That's what I do all day. That's okay. another thing. I need to speed up my time instead of working all day in the store. Okay. Just work, you know, uh, nine to five. Mimi, I'm going to give you homework. Okay. Okay. So... The next couple of weeks, mm -hmm. let's. I want you to keep track of your time. Okay. So just start writing down what gets done because working all day is actually procrastination. Mm. 
in my opinion. You shouldn't be working all day. You have to set some hard stops like Fridays, I'm not going to work at all. Then you have, you're forced to learn how to do things faster. That is true. So I want some hard, some hard stops. Okay, cool. I'm going to be timing. Okay. My work. Let's go with Don. Don, good morning. What can you do to improve your schedule next year? And I want to talk to you specifically because you have sometimes those side gigs that pop up that are super profitable. How do you manage that next year? Um, well, um, you know, one thing is having my, if my niece can just stay here, you know, if she, if she can't find a job, I'll be set. So, um, you know, she was, she's here, she's here yesterday and she was, uh, you know, I actually started her on this uh, entering stuff on the spreadsheet. Um, I have a ton of, ton of inventory I've been saving. Um, so having her do that, then, then a photo and then just upload to hammock. I'll still be listing um, stuff that I like straight to eBay, but I'm going to have her uh, just go through the, you know, through hammock. So that, that's one thing. But as far as the side gigs, um, I, I did one yesterday. We, me and my buddy, uh, we, we put in a, a quick security camera system. I, you know, I've, I've had it for, for, for two months and I've had no time to do it. So except for I'm off of my regular job. So, you know, it was, it was actually a really quick job. We knocked it out uh, yesterday. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm going to try to try to avoid those if I can help it, but it just depends, you know, if, if it's like, if, you know, that was, that was like $3,500 for four hours worth of work, you know, so I, I'm going to keep those ones, but if, but sometimes they're the same amount for, you know, like two days worth of work, you know, that wouldn't be worth it. So just try to be very selective in, in what I take. But, um, but I think the main thing that'll help my schedule is, is, it's just having an employee here, you know, um, it, you know, that's just, you know, just me doing all this stuff. It, it kind of, um, you know, I, I just want to focus on the business more. So I really want to be that, that big businessman on campus that has people and can afford health insurance for everyone. And it is so hard to, in California, if you have one employee, you have to have workers comp. And it is not easy to have employees like, and I was just thinking being able to provide another human being with a livable wage in California with health, health benefits, you have to be an incredible entrepreneur just to hire one person. It's, it's just yeah. mind blowing. Yeah. It's, it's a big, big responsibility. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I want to go to that point. I mean, fortunately, um, you know, she's still on her, on her, my, my sister-in-law's insurance, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so she, and so she's, she's not actually they're, they're, they're independent. They're contractors. You know, I'm, I'm just yeah. 1099, 1099 ing them. But yeah, that would, that would be a big step. I, I don't think I'd want to go there. I, I do have, have workers comp for, um, but it's, it's not, not totally, it's really just set up just for me, you know? So it's, it gets expensive you know, when you start adding people, um, you know, I have it for the security camera business, um, but I, I was I'm thinking about not renewing that next year just because, you know, it's I don't I didn't do enough work. You know, it's very expensive. I I don't know what the premium would be for an eBay lister. I mean, that's that's pretty. It's not the kind of work you're going to get hurt at usually. Um, no, it's not going to be expensive. But I was just thinking, right now the way I'm set up because of California rules. People work whenever they want. They use their own equipment and I can't tell them how to do it. I can just say, this is the result that I want. You do it how you want to do it with your own equipment, whenever you want. That's the only way I can get away with a contractor. If I start, if I start making rules, now I have to pay, um, to pay different, different things. So it's like uh, my CPA is like, if you want to keep it as 1099, you can't base, you can't control anything. So which has been fine to, to a degree, but if I want to go from, if I want to double my business, I need more reliable people. So it's kind of a. Yeah. You, you really have to jump all in on that. Um, yeah. you, your CPA, is that, is that a CPA who deals with, with the internet sales specifically? Yeah. So I, I use Mark, not your dad's CPA. Okay. So he has a hundred thousand dollar eBay business. I'm sorry, Amazon business himself. And he only does, tax services for um, 
resellers. Also, I am not going to give tax advice in 2021. I'm just going to tell people I'm not a tax pro. I'm not a CPA. I can tell you how I do it, but I'm not going to give you advice because it doesn't make sense. It's like, uh, because there's so many interesting write-offs. So for me, this is interesting. The IRS will be, because I'm set up as an S-corp. I've been trying to figure out what to pay myself. I figured it out. I'm going to pay myself $1.50 an item as the eBay manager. That's my salary. Okay. So, um, And that's how I would look at it, is if you hired someone to manage your store. So I want everyone in this group, five years from now, when we're all on a reseller cruise, um, and our businesses work, even though we're not there. So we graduate from being pickers to being a store owner. I'm thinking the person that runs the store for you, that's what they should get paid. That's what I'm just thinking. $1. fifty per item is the premium you would pay for someone else to run your store. Do the promotions. Make sure the shipping is the cheapest way. Um, handle the, the angry customer. Um, yeah, you have you have a lot of you sell a lot of items though, you know. So that's that's a decent yeah. amount. I don't I don't sell too many items. So that, but I, but I actually, you know, I haven't been paying myself a salary. I had one accountant tell me that's a big red flag. Um, I I was, you know, I I was gonna start trying to. I've been investing in in the stock market, um, and actually in uh, in uh, you know Bitcoin and Ethereum with with the uh, with the profits. This is like, this is is huge. So I was, you know, not like major, but just taking a little bit and investing in the market over the last um, six months. And it's, it's like doing way better than, than my 401k. Um, yeah. And so, um, you know, the stock, just the straight stock market, but just kind of only playing around, not, not totally diving all in, but um, you know, so I, I think I kind of like to continue with that um, trend. It's just something relatively new to me, but yeah, but um you know, out of, you know, I could pay us out of the salary. And I actually was talking to um, my financial plan or actually my CPA. And they're saying this is a stupid idea. But I was thinking, you know, some of it's done so well. I was like, oh, I can become at another side hustle, eBay, and then and then stock market investor. So I could just buy straight from the business. And the guy's like, no, this is stupid. Don't don't even think that i was thinking like have another division just investing in in this uh he said if you're going to do that just you know take pay yourself a salary and just do it do it separately not make it part of the business you know but uh yeah i think just, that's um that's more risky but i do like the idea or i want on that same thought i want people to think about this too if you have a sep ira um you can actually contribute i think 80 grand a year so some people who are doing this are behind on their 401k or behind on their retirement, behind on savings. Roth IRA, I think is six grand for an individual. But if you own your own company, your company can contribute up to 80 grand. And it's for people who are entrepreneurs and defer that savings in the beginning. So you can catch up if you work for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I but I have, you know, a 401k through my day job. And so yeah. I think I, I was talking to somebody, but not, and they said that you, I think it's, you can't add it. It has to, it, it can't be like separate things. I think it's a total for you. Yeah. Like they already figured that out years, years ago. You can't just like have all these companies and, and never, and, and save everything. Yeah. But it seems like Patty knows a little bit about this. She's putting in some. Yeah. Patty's got some, some Patty, you want to chat? Yeah. Sorry. I, I worked for brokers and I was an insurance agent. So what are your thoughts? Um, I personally do a Roth IRA because, um, you know, the taxes, basically I don't want to pay taxes on it when I get older, but yeah, investing, I would not, I mean, I have small accounts in, um, oh Jesus, sorry. I'm only like two sips into my coffee, so I'm not wide awake yet. No worries. Um, <laughs> um, so, but you, you did know, mention have... life, ins life insurance and disability. Yeah. So your business can pay for your life insurance and your short-term and long-term disability, because especially if you're a sole proprietor and you're taking care of your own business, if you fall 
you know, you break a leg, you get in a car accident, you can't go out, you can't source, you can't list, you know, something happens to you, you get COVID, you know, you have long-term issues from it. Um, Short-term and long-term disability, especially before the age of like 50 is relatively cheap. Um, Also, your business can pay for your life insurance policies. um, And Hmm. that's super cheap. Um, Also, Chris, just the thing is, you know, when your child is born, if you currently have life insurance, you can actually transfer a portion of your life insurance automatically to your child. Okay. Well, at least in Illinois, it does vary state by state, but you do also want to have life insurance on everybody. Um, my number yeah. one pet peeve is I will not contribute to your GoFundMe because you can't bury somebody in your family. It's 10 bucks a month. <laughs> Life insurance is really cheap. It yeah, really definitely. is. Yeah, it's it's super cheap. If you don't have it, you're I mean, it's especially if you don't have any like pre existing conditions and you're you're young. I mean, you can get a huge policy for like twenty bucks a month, thirty bucks a month. It's mm-hmm. not I you agree. Know. Yeah, especially now that I'm responsible for a little one in a few months. Everyone should be thinking about life insurance. Um but yeah, pull that, that pull that million million dollar policy for like fifty bucks a month. You're not going to miss the fifty bucks. No. In California, not. that's like breakfast, right? It's avocado toast and a latte. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just visited my brother in Southern California. It is so expensive for everything, but yeah, I, I get it. It's it's interesting living here. I would say so far. As expensive it is the, as it is to live here, I still like California more than I think I've been to forty states. I just like it here more. There's so much more going on. The opportunities are huge. I was just looking at a breakdown. Um, I've met more like six figure women owners here, more minority owners here, more entrepreneurs. There's more co ops here. There are people who run their own business and like there's so many different things. There are hacker houses here that you can go spend $30 a night and live with 20 other engineers and you can build something. Like those are the most interesting things in the world. I lived in one for a week, $30 a night. Everyone there is an entrepreneur. Food is included. So you can eat as much as you want and just network with smart people all day long. Imagine if you were just there for four years, you would just, you would network and your mind would be blown to seeing all these people invent things that doesn't I just exist get over the poop in the street i know there's poop in the streets that's that's a reality and, and the crime the bad. and the danger so it, it's yeah i know it makes it exciting i like it it's the full gamut the, the, yeah also like 70 percent of the homeless people live here so you get to see the whole thing there's billionaires row where um my old boss said that a $4 million house will make you feel sad because it's the worst one on the block. Or, you know, you can go somewhere where 100 people share the street as a urinal. It's just every single thing is here. Um, so I love it. Life insurance also makes me think that you need to grow yourself um, a little bit more of an abundance basis because there's other stuff that, you know, taking care of yourself is one thing, but taking care of your family is awesome. And then if you make more than you need, you're always in a position to give. Um, I was, Denise is saying it's the same thing in Chicago. I think it's the same thing everywhere. There are areas in Florida you probably wouldn't go to. What do you think, Bill? Okay. Um, let's go with Xenia. Xenia, busy lady. Next year, what do you want to do differently? Good morning. Um, so next year, I'd like to, I'd like to a, uh, add like online arbitrage, um, so that because of my time constraint, I, I, you know, my husband was, he's helping with me with the kids, you know, so we kind of split, <laughs> one kid is with him, one kid is with me, and that's how we're trying to do a little bit of work. But he was like out of town for like almost two weeks and I had both of them. And at that time I couldn't go source because sourcing with kids is is um, is a challenge, it's a super challenge. So anyway, um, all that time, 
all I was doing is just basically relisting some of my old listings and, you know, trying to trying to just optimize my my titles, change my the pictures, um, and like I said, all I'm doing most of the time is organic sales. So it has really worked. So I was thinking to myself, you know, going to the store, it, it takes a lot of time, right? Going, sourcing, coming back, cleaning, doing all the stuff. So I'm like, well, if I can just source online and have the items come to me, you know, at least like 50% of the time, that will save me some, that will save me time. I don't know. That's kind of what I'm really working towards. I'm definitely going to, I wanted to get a minivan and just borrow other reseller kids and be like, I'll handle it. I'll take all seven to the thrift store. And they're like, <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to get them out of the car. Probably not. Um, but yeah, yeah so, I know that's a challenge. So that is, yeah. So just all on arbitrage, if I can add that, um, I've done some liquidations and that has worked. Um, that has worked. Okay. The thing is, it's just, you can't choose and pick, right? So Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Here's your first video idea, Chris. Thrifting yeah. with the baby. It'll be very popular, I'm sure, when I get it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go out and see what... Because um, I was just saying over the weekend, I changed the diaper for the first time. And I was like, this is just like getting an item into uh, a padded flat rate envelope. Cause like you gotta, you gotta basically fold it properly. You don't want it to leak. Like let's say you're shipping, you know, something that was liquid. You'd have to really pay attention or it would leak. Um, I don't know though. People are saying there's going to be blowouts and things I'm not expecting, but I mean, so far it was the same thing. You will thing gag. As... You, you will gag a few times. Cause someone was like, Chris, you can't practice the smell. That was probably the most common comment that I got. But I mean, yeah, I can't practice that part, but. I think that the packing, it is, you know, since I pack my items into a nine by 11 clear polymailer, that is harder than changing a diaper so far, but I don't know. We'll see. And my um, future baby will probably move a lot. So maybe that'll be harder if they are rambunctious. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Let's, um, let's go with Scott. Scott, good morning. What can you do for your schedule next year? Oh, this is great. I'm, I'm just about in tears with you today. <laughs> yep. Just wait. I've got three girls, so. <laughs> oh. Um, Scheduling-wise, um, kind of hit it before. going to spend some more time uh, refining what I'm buying, going after um, a few product lines for FBA. And also to put them on the eBay side as well. Um, <clears throat> this is going fine, but I still need to create some type of a base to go off of. And, and not just one-offs all the time. Yeah. Absolutely have to do that. So I've been for the last three to six months, you know, doing the Alibabas and all everything else and trying to yep. hone in on the one or two things and stick with the one or two until those really start to go. And then, of course, you need to keep up a little bit more on top of it, too. So this is a, an analogy I was thinking of. So like, let's say reselling is fishing and you are using a fishing pole one at a time. If you were doing that, you definitely would want to catch bigger fish because you, you only have one pole. Right. <clears throat> um, but if you are if you had like a machine gun, you were shooting into the water. That's like refillable. That's like the ultimate weapon. You would catch tons of fish. You know, but that would require you to sell either identical items or similar. So I think it's, it takes a lot more time to build the machine gun. So everyone just take your time. Good suppliers are, are literally worth millions of dollars. So just to remember, like as an example, I was thinking about Linda too, with home furnishings, the, um, this is what I was thinking this, cause I haven't seen this before. There's the container store where you go in and you get organizational stuff. And then there's Ikea where they show you how to do it. I think there should be a store in the mall that shows people how to organize their closets with those clear things because people have so much crap that storage units are overflowing. Their houses look ridiculous. If you've been to a garage sale and you look into their garage, it looks terrible. If you just showed people, like <clears throat> people would pay money to put 
their junk in a clear container. For sure. That's been proven. Like that, that Instagram channel, the home edit is huge. So if you went to the mall and you were selling those clear containers for $3.99, $5.99, $9.99, just showing people how to organize their spaces, I feel like that would be so huge because people didn't, apparently we're in a recession, but online retail is on fire. So people are still buying stuff. It's kind of blowing my mind. But yes, yeah, Scott, thank you for reminding us all to spend time every single week working on replenishables. Yeah, I really think so for the, for the long haul. For the long yeah, we can we can all do the genes and the you know the the CDs and stuff, but I think you also need to create a little bit more of your business way down, looking farther, farther, farther out, and and build a bigger base that way. Um, let's go with Luciana. Can you chat? She might be at work. She's at work. Oh wait. Um, mute. There we go. Yes, kind of. Just finished cooking. <laughs> Has Love been it. crazy. What's, yes, what's, now I'm logging in and sending offers and uh, trying to. It is crazy, man. <laughs> Taking care of the house and doing this stuff. But it's, I'm getting things straight. What do you need to do differently next year? <laughs> Just get my schedule straight. No playing around. Is wake up, get house ready. Just like Christine, you know, wake up earlier. <laughs> Mm -hmm. to cook clean so right now everything is done cooking i'm gonna I sit down i already have my shipping ready i'm gonna send the offers and go as soon as they call finish go to the post office so just creating the schedule mm. and and you know being there but i need to source better because i'm, I'm almost out of inventory it has been crazy so for me to be able to list i need to buy and uh, I kind of find, found one place that I can buy new stuff with tags because I'm doing, I do clothes and hard goods. And uh, I kind of got spoiled. I'm not looking into new things. And I think I should too. You don't so, have to look into new things if it's working. No. No. Really? What if I, well, that's true. But because of a relationship I had, I had a place. <clears throat> that is, how do you say, non-profit place mm -hmm. that approached me and said, can I just give you all this stuff for you to sell when you give me something out of it? So I got some of his stuff, and uh, which is great, but it's more hard goods. I don't like those too much, but I'm doing it because I need stuff to list. So that's it pretty much, trying to get organized for 2021. And you just caught me in the middle of sending the offers. That's what I do. Wake up, house, offers, shipping. When it finished here, post office to come back. And uh, laundry. It is crazy, but it's doable. You know, if you keep the schedule. If I mess up one thing, though, everything kind of, blah, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, you got to so, keep consistent. I, I, and it, yeah. Yeah, so, it is, it, it is that. It is sounds simple. You know, wake up, answer questions, ship, list, family, drink, yeah, yeah. drink some water, make some food, go to sleep. <clears throat> yeah, like it is complicated sometimes. And uh, like these last few days, I didn't even have the camera. I have been looking at the calls or later, but I was like deep cleaning the house because the end of the year, big house, cleaning, you know, curtains, bathrooms, tubs, and scrubbing everything. There is no way I'm going to turn this camera on. Everybody go, feel pity for me. <laughs> no, we all do the same thing. Yeah, so <clears throat> the little things that I cannot, you know, I have kind of putting the house stuff on the side and my house became a mess. And no, I need to find the balance and keep that schedule. Even if I have to wake up earlier to cook, that's what I, I gotta do. But I'm still playing with my photo setup because I love this part of the business. And I think I got the perfect white background without editing. And I love that. That's amazing. So that's, yes, I'm lighting the background <clears throat> separately from the clothes. So I have one light to the background. And it comes just bite, bite, bite. So I was pretty excited. That was last night. 
So that's going to be nice not having to edit because I'm listening on the computer now, not on the phone anymore. So that's it. Okay. Let's go with Matt. Matt, what do you need to do differently next year? I guess I could get better at scheduling because right now I kind of have a love hate with my schedule because there isn't one. Um, <laughs> but I uh, yeah, I guess I could just try to try to do a little better with scheduling. That way I could really gauge how long it's taking me to do things. I have a great idea of how long it's taking me to do everything right now, but I think it'd be more constructive to know exactly how long and um, just know how much I have to work every week, you know, instead of just kind of working whenever I need to. You know, I, I saw a definition of wealth that I thought I would share with you, which is um, being rich is not having to work. So it's not a dollar amount because you can lower it if you, depending on location arbitrage, where you live. You could set up some passive income. Now, if you had like three rental properties, you'd probably be done. So that's yeah. like a, a thought of a new thought of wealth is just not having to work, not some kind of money goal. Another thought, where does your wealth come from personally? Right. What is um, what's a, what's so important to you that you actually tag with the meaning of wealth? That's right. Like, is it let's say I really loved living in Florida. Yeah. If 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 I move to Florida, it doesn't matter what I do. I'm already where I want to be. I'm wealthy as I can be, right? That's right. You know, you can just make it work when you get there. So, uh, yeah, I see. Of, That's a great way to do it. Like, this is one of the only occupations where it can be fun and earn money. Because I feel like learning how to sell things quicker. I, if I had to sell toothpicks, I think I would still find some joy in it. It's not that bad. Figure out yeah. what. Like, I don't necessarily think you have a personal love of of jeans no I, I don't and i'm addicted to the part of the business where i come in every day i look around and i go i can make that faster yeah. like yesterday with the dryer i used to soak a wash rag and then throw it in the dryer with the jeans to create some moisture but instead of doing that now i have a spray bottle say 15 seconds per dryer load right there you go and that was just something i did yesterday like every day, I feel like I come up with something that's uh, making it a little better. Also, that you'll never run out of things. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what uh, motivates me to come in, right? Yeah. It's not listing for four hours or the schedule. Forget that. That's boring as hell, you know? That's why I think the opposite of being happy is kind of being a know-it-all. Because, like, if you already know everything, what's the point? Yes. Oh my God. That's why we do anything that we do. It's to yeah. kill mystery. Yeah. To erase ignorance. It, that's right. That's the only reason we do anything that we do, you know? Yeah. I love it. That if you just like, um, I saw this hat from a lean manufacturing guy and the hat said, I'm, I'm at war with waste. And he's like, I just go around looking for waste to get rid of. That's my entire life. And, and when, but when I do that, it creates more resources for all the people around me. Yeah. Here he has more money than he can spend, but he's just out there eliminating waste for people. And he's like, that makes the world a better place. If everybody was doing that instead of creating waste, it would be di totally different. I don't know, man, my idea with the whole landfill, you know, you can look at it as a bad thing, but. At some point in the distant future, maybe a thousand years, maybe 50 years, who knows, the landfill is going to be the gold mine. I agree. I mean, it's the same thing as a regular. You, you, I bet you a landfill is probably more valuable than just dirt, like mining for ore and metals. I bet you a landfill has more, more stuff in it. Oh, for sure, man. There's all kinds of like old cell phones and TVs, you know, the yeah. wires, metals in there. I'm going to share one more thought for everyone and call it a day, which is the, um, I, I'm from Utah and in Utah, there's a Kennecott um, copper mine and they mine for copper, but they're also the largest gold mine in the world, but not on purpose. They just find gold along the way. So every, you don't need to find some kind of fancy pro, You don't need a fancy product. 
If you just, even if you sell jeans, you'll probably run into a $500 pair of jeans or a thousand. If that's all you did, you would run, you might run into a hundred thousand dollar pair of jeans. If that's all you did, you found that one rare, super destroyed vintage hundred year old pair of jeans, you know, so it's okay being a copper miner because you're going to find some stuff that's insanely valuable along the way. If you just focus. All right, everyone, I'm going to get back to diaper practice and listing.